Hi, Hi Hans. Hans. Welcome to Full Time Hans, the podcast series two. We've taken a little hiatus, but now we're back and we're here bringing you all the tea and having a little bit of gossip. So sit back, take notes, let's go. <laughs> Today we're going to talk all about single Sallies and dating Debbies and uh, how uh, people navigate getting into a relationship these days. So on series one, we did briefly touch on relationships, cheating, being single, but we didn't I really mean, go... I think most of the time you were just shouting <laughs> yeah and we did we did sort of skip over yeah we were brief yeah and we had a lot of questions like please do another another you know can you explain more about what you've been through um on each individual thing so we thought fuck it let's revisit um yeah so single sallies and dating debbies let's mm. talk about sally uh, we've all been there we might well most some of you are still going to be there oh yeah Living your best life. No, I've not been Sally for a very long time, so I'm a bit rusty. But I know from looking on the outside in, you are either one of two Sallys. You're either happily single. Happy and Sally. You, and you chill about it. Or you're sad Sally. And <laughs> <laughs> you're sad Sally and you look you're at everyone FOMO, else around Sally. you and just cry yourself to sleep at night. And you long to like have that fake instagram relationship that's shoved down your neck every time you go on to try and make yourself feel better Mm. i think whether that be famous people or like your mate because like when you're single sally and your mate's dating debbie and then goes into a relationship (laughs) rachel yeah once they're a debbie and a rachel you're like fuck you like oh i'm so oh they're like oh my god like he's amazing they're amazing and you're like yeah it's when you open up Facebook and everyone's getting engaged or having a baby. It's when they ask you to come on a date with them because they feel sorry for you. Oh, God. Your oh, fur, yeah. That third wheeling ain't fun. As much wine as you can drink on that day. Oh, God. I used to be a third wheel. Oh, me too. It was all right. I never got picked for dates for a long time. I was always like the tall friend. <laughs> That, that was in the back of the car so like that you know when you used to drive cars around like Sainsbury's car park by Mackey's that vibe mm. I was always the one in the back oh no oh like the passenger Polly oh the one that's got to hold the drinks oh but yes the one they pass the cardboard <laughs> drink thing to and they're like he's like grabbing her thigh and you're oh, just like oh god does anyone want their milkshake I'm all alone I'm here there's no one here beside me and then you're like pretending to go on your phone Oh, God. That's so awful. And then back then it was like a two door, so you couldn't get out. So you were also claustrophobic. <laughs> was there snogging in the front? Uh, <laughs> then your mate's like, you all right? And you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Absolutely fucking fine. I want to be single, yeah. Um, and I also think that when you're a single Sally, you either use it to empower you, don't you? Mm-hmm. You, you want to... Look, the trick is, no one is ever going to love you until you love yourself and you know what you want. You have to know what you want and and what boundaries I think you want. Your expectations and hold on to it. Don't don't be like, yeah, this is... Men always want the girl that's like assertive and then you start backing down to them. Yeah, I think like when you're you're single and you don't want a relationship, that's when people come flocking in. Yeah, why is that? It's because you're giving off like that energy of like sassy. You don't give a shit you're not looking for it you're powerful self-love yeah you're like you, when you reach that point you're not checking your phone to see whether they've texted you back because you are not interested you've got other stuff going on hobbies <laughs> watching telly on your own trust me a woman that can be on her own in her own space in silence is a very dangerous woman because you don't need anybody else because you're comfortable with that and that's like for me personally that I used to be so needy. Do you know what I mean? Like I hated being on my own. I would never go and get a coffee on my own. I'd be like, oh my God, people are going to think I'm... Now I'm like, I want to be on my own. Oh yeah, I love it. In silence. Mm. Watching TV on your own. But is that because we're married? I don't know. I think maybe <laughs> it does come with age as well, doesn't yeah. it? Maybe that. Yeah. But if if I was single and I saw like a couple walking down the street... And I was like drinking coffee outside, having a little cig, right? I'd be like, oh god! Like I, Look at them. yeah. But they if see if people sick. snog like in public, oh, it makes me no, feel sick. I hate it. But it never used to bother me. I used to, I'd love a bit of PDA, you know. 
Mm, but I've I, never uh, really appreciated anyone like holding hands fine. What about when you've had three glasses of uh, rosé in in a bar and you're literally like you're in that moment with the person on a date, aren't you? Or like when you're seeing someone and there's no one else around you. Oh yeah, it's like you're, you're like dry humping yeah. in the booth. <laughs> And you don't care? No. But nowadays, I guess people would probably film you. Yeah, weird. 100% you're on TikTok. You would be, wouldn't you? Mm. Oh, no, I don't like that. But <laughs> anyway, yeah, so there's like, you're either a powerful woman who doesn't need a man or a woman. But that's a process. Or you're desperate. Now, desperate. <laughs> I mean, I was. <laughs> I was like, please, someone love me. Please. Luckily. You also need to heal because whether it's you that's ended the relationship or them or like it was mutual, probably it was you because they're an idiot. But what something's probably gone on for that to come to an end. And I think that there's always oh, yeah, things that you need trauma. to... You, yeah, you have trauma. You have to heal from it. And the classic thing to do is to be a rebound Rachel. <laughs> I thought she was right ra- relationship Rachel. Yeah, but then rebound she, Rebecca. Uh, okay, relationship Rachel, and then rebound Rebecca. A rebound is a very dangerous situation because the first person, honey, that comes to you, you're going to be like, "Oh my god, they're amazing." They bring you a Mackey's breakfast, and you think that's it. On. Yeah, mm. like because you've gone from getting not even the bare minimum to someone showing you half of what you're due. Yeah. And you take it and you put them on a pedestal. Or if you get with someone, if you're single and then you start seeing someone that's in a relationship and you think in your head that that it's because their relationship is shit and he's, he leaves you. Let's say he leaves her for you. It ain't never going to work. No. Because that per- that's who they are as a person. He doesn't respect her enough. You know, when they go, it ain't working. Mm, why are you in a relationship? like you live with her yeah i know but we're sleeping in separate beds like we don't talk i've been there and i'm like oh yeah they're tied into a tenancy <laughs> they've got a dog they've got a dog um oh, they, they've, they're they still sharing the food that's in the freezer <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to empty the fridge and the freezer and then they're gonna you know and then they'll always be like i'm gonna tell her I'm going to tell it. They're not. They're just testing the water out and see how, how long they can have it both ways because men want their cake and eat it. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, and then I think if I could tell my younger self that you're not respecting yourself, you don't owe the girl anything. Like, you know when your boyfriend cheats on you, yeah? And you go for the girl. We've all done it. Oh, my God. She's just, they're always ugly, aren't they? And you're, you're like, they're disgusting. <laughs> um, well, that's always happened to me. I, I mean, I would have been devastated if I'd have been cheated on with an absolute 10 out of 10. Can you even imagine? Yeah, but I think you automatically think they're gross because yeah. they've upset you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Your mentality, like, it could be Cheryl Cole and you'd be like, oh, how dare he, the peasant. Um, you always go for the girl. And what I've learned is, is... It ain't the girl's fault because the girl isn't in a relationship with you. She doesn't owe you nothing. She doesn't owe yeah, you an but apology. Most of the time, if you're the single one, unless it's your friend that fucking oh, sleeps God, with yeah. your boyfriend. But if you're single and you've got a man or a woman telling you X, Y, and Z, you're gonna believe them, aren't you? So <clears throat> I just think that's why you can't take, unless like they're in your friendship group and they know that you're in a relationship it's never the other person's fault no but talking of rebounds like i think it goes another way where you can have a rebound and then you just cry after because it was shit and you realize that you shouldn't have slept with someone oh yeah yeah that it yeah especially if you've been drinking Mm-hmm. and it's always you, like, you almost feel like more alone like yeah. you, or like if you have a date with someone and then like I don't know, you sleep with them or something happens or, and then they leave or you leave. I think it, you have that moment where you don't feel on your own, but then the aftermath is you feel worse than when you actually started, and that's because you need to heal, 
and that's what our, like, I think we're trying to put across because if you're a healed person women have needs we are in 2021 like we said before if you want to have consensual sex with a man or a woman yeah for pleasure it's transactional if you can do that with no emotion i feel like we're always like do i like him and oh you haven't got to read into it do you know what i mean no yeah like if it's a one night stand it's a one night stand if that's if that's what makes you you want in the moment and you're not gonna cry the next day then be do you know what i mean live live your life i think there's a lot of judgment isn't there um was it it was recent it was a while ago when we saw when men say like how many men have you slept with Mm. and you i don't know they want to hear you say like four yeah good number oh not too many then but if you've been in a relationship for six years and had sex it's still the same thing in a vagina, yeah, isn't it? So you, you, yeah. So you're implied to be what a, a, a slut because you're sleeping with multiple men, okay? But if you've had one or two relationships over the same period, you still would have had sex. Therefore, your vagina's <laughs> still the same. It's still the yeah, same. But your vagina doesn't change. Exactly, though. But like it's when they. You... I think young people say body count now, don't they? Yeah, so, oh um, god, that gives me the ick. It's like when you murder people, that. I know. <laughs> but men will be like, "Oh yeah, it's about 70. and then you go, "Oh, it's eleven. And yeah, they're like, why do boys me? do that? Yeah, but whatever they tell you, you've either got a minus like the zero on the end, or add another one. You can tell which one's gl- like. Yeah, lying. I personally think that men over number it. Mm-hmm. to try and be like yeah you know when it's really unattractive oh, it's when they go oh it's in like in love island when they're like oh it's in it's between like 100 and 300 right it's a bit vague 300 <laughs> how Who would you even that? start counting um toby was it toby no i'll i'll find it but they're, they're all like 20 and they've set of like 300 people yeah but like you don't even i've have been enough- busy <laughs> I wasn't busy this time last year. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but like, think about it. There's 365 days in a year. How many times? Oh, that's just silly. Exactly. But like, I wouldn't count like twice in the same night as like, because it's the same person as well. No, no. Oh, as if they're having like... But they're saying like their body count is like this much when the reality is it's not feasible unless they're fucking like every other day and girls play it down we all do it you know oh, in your you head shave you're you're sitting you there count. right let's i don't know <laughs> you're sitting there thinking 12 right for an example 12 12 12 you look you look right at him five i mean and also like that that's generally like over dinner or like in a bar mm. it's not like have you got any brothers how many people you fuck then <laughs> like oh who like, said that chivalry was dead i reckon i think like it comes out like fourth day that's when they want because you both oh yeah but i think girls you want to know don't you you want it this is this is where it's toxic like right 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 at the beginning you want to know who their ex is you want to know what makes them tick you want to know how to piss them off if they don't text you back what are you going to do? You're going to put up a story, aren't you? Oh, having, like, having the best time. <laughs> I've seen videos on TikTok where girls like make their bedroom like a club. There's like a filter yeah! in there and they Have pretend you... that they're out. No, my favourite one is the one where it's like two girl mates and she's like dressed up as a boy and they yes! like, is like hugging. Yes. <laughs> That's so funny. Honestly, but no, like, I don't know, like, when you're dating in this day and age i suppose it's most of it starts online like it's very rare that you hear like oh yeah they came up to me in a coffee shop and asked for my number yeah and generally most people are in a like a disposed they see it as like a disposable relationship or it's like a non-labeled relationship and my meaning of that is that the guy will think that they can just do whatever the fuck they like I think there's women like that too, though. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Um, I just think it's really... Like, if you're single and you feel like no one wants to be on their own, right? So we're now getting into, like, grey jogger season. Girls, for the girls at the back, we all know what that means. It's cosy. Cosy nights. Red wine. Cheese. You want to go out for dinner. 
Christmas presents, winter wonderland, couple things. Everyone wants to be in a relationship. And boys have given up their Ibiza diet. They've done it. Men generally want to be in relationships, don't they? In winter. Yeah. In winter. They want to be single for the summer. Yeah. And then winter, they like cozy down with like one of them. So I feel like now if you're single, there's probably a lot of pressure. You don't want to be on your own for Christmas. They, I mean, they'll probably break up with you when it's their work Christmas too, but just saying. <laughs> um, they do, they don't know. If you if you were single, well, I'm going out, I'm just letting you know, oh, I do want a relationship, but around December the 15th, I do go out with my work <laughs> for two working days. <laughs> don't worry about the girl in the office. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Who? Oh, oh, I think I know that girl in the... No, don't worry about her. She's just the mate. She's not. <laughs> She's not just she's not just a mate, is she? The girl in the office. And Jesus then he asks Christ. His girlfriend she's just on a friend. <laughs> yeah, he'll wait. He'll wait. Be on a hangover and be Isn't like, let's make it official. <laughs> but I think there's so much pressure, like, especially at our sort of age as well. Like pressure from oh what you know, your family, your friends that are all in relationships, like they feel sorry for you. Like and I think that when I was single, I felt that everyone around, I had no single friends. Everyone around me was in a relationship and it literally, I was like, oh my God, I, what, because how are you meant to go out? Like you want to go out, especially as you get older and everyone's got kids. Oh, oh yeah. can you come out the weekend? Well, they can't get babysitter or they've got to go home because they've, they've got to look after their kids the next day and stuff like that. And they're not wanting to go out on the pool, are they? But you are, because you're single. And then do you actually meet... I mean, it's been so long since, A, we've been single, and B, since we've actually gone out. (laughs) But And obviously, you couldn't go to the bar. Because of COVID, you weren't allowed to actually... Yeah, you can now. But I feel like, do people chat girls up? It's just those... It's the old guys at the bar. So now the old guys are obviously my age. Yeah, we were talking about this the other day like you know when you're younger or for the younger girls listening to this you know what i'm talking about they've got skinny jeans on a lot of tattoos boat shoes boat shoes or like trainers (laughs) shut up (laughs) really expensive trainers like harachi disgusting look other trainers are available unfortunately for us loads of aftershave everyone in our age category like we were saying like lego hair If we were single now, fake Rolex. we'd be fucked because the people our age have either got kids, they've been married, or baggage. That or it's weird if they haven't done that. Like, why are you still single? Yeah, because then also you've got to think like, if you don't want children, or you've already got children and you don't want any more from a previous relationship, or you don't want any, it's a, it's a, it's later on to be having that conversation. Mm. Like, would I, would I want to get with a thirty-five year old now? in a new relationship if he wanted ki- I don't want any more children no thank you see ya like obviously to me at my age if I was single I wouldn't be interested in how many people they'd slept with I'd be like what's your credit score like and how do you want any other children <laughs> have you got a donor card anything under 900 you've got to go <laughs> like I think that are it you changes your organs do you have life insurance <laughs> do you like murder documentaries <laughs> what's your preference on cheese <laughs> I feel like it, the questions change, don't they? A hundred percent. And I feel like pers- from a personal perspective, if I was to be single, a date would be like, second date would be like an interview. Oh, I'd no, literally... I interview on the first. Do you? Yeah. I'm savage. Like, I, when I was single, I knew what I wanted. I was in like a very strong situation but all I all I wanted was for someone to love me and just me. So like I was like, if you are giving me any sort of red flag, you've got to go. I was like batting them away. Yeah, I, I think you know. I think I personally think you you get ready for the day. You're excited. Your girls are egging you on. You've had a little chardonnay where you're getting ready. You're stressing about your outfit. What's sexy to me is when they plan it. If a man is to be like, really like, right, be ready, this is what I'm getting you, or meet me here, and then it's all planned, that's sexy. Yeah. If if you've got to start planning stuff, no. 
I wouldn't be interested. If you ask them on a date, you've got a plan. But if they invite you on a date... It's, obviously, it's personal preference. Some people love it, don't they? Like, like to organise it, like to be spontaneous, like to take control. You do you. But for me personally, I would like things to be planned. Bit of, you know, a bit of surprise, bit of a build-up. And what's your take on, like, say you're messaging someone, you're single... Say they ask you out on a date on the Friday. Now, I've seen a lot about this on this woman that I follow online. The guy didn't message her all week until the day of the date. Now, to me, if you don't keep that connection going, nah. You're obviously talking to other people. Yeah. And I know that people are going to be like, well, everyone's talking to other people. You're single. But this is the game that I don't like. Yeah, this is... I mean, I would find it... I wouldn't go on the date if I hadn't heard from them since they asked me on the date. So what about if he asked you on the date on the Monday and then on the and said, like, let's see each other Friday, would you message him in between? Or would you want him to chase you? Oh, no, I, I'm a messenger. Like, with, with Dan, he asked me on a date on the Friday. I said no. And then on the Thursday, I texted him, like, are you, still, are you still free to take me on that date tomorrow? Yeah. So you I wouldn't mind... I hadn't spoken to him since he asked me. So if he hadn't... On, if you hadn't said no so and i'd have said yes, yes i would have expected him to talk to me okay same because i feel like the connection but then the, obviously from the guy's point of view or the other person's point of view why is it always like one-sided like why is it... see i saw this thing like if you're in the talking stages with someone so you haven't been on a date you're just talking texting whatever and then they start giving you one word answers yeah. It means that they're putting their energy into someone else and you should just pack it in there. Yeah, so if... It, yeah, there, and, and I also think it's a busy job. If you're talking to, like, multiple people, that's why How I think the... Com- yeah, but that's like why I think the conversation's, like, generic. Yeah. Because they have to be clever, yeah? They've got to be clever what they're saying to you because they're probably talking to so many people... You know what chat I mean as well. Hi, you okay? I was also seeing this guy, DJ, and he called me Bambi, and he was like, oh, it's because you've got to be big blue eyes and all this. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And I, re- yeah. So as you mature, I'm thinking, I was like, oh my God, that's so cute. Like, uh, what an absolute idiot. He was obviously messaging so many other girls that he didn't want to get everyone's names mixed up. So he'd probably just, gen- There's prob- hi, Bambi's out there. <laughs> He was based he in was Brighton. He was probably calling everyone Bambi. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is so fucking cringe. Yeah. Bambi one, Bambi two. Yeah. And the conversation, like, you know, when it's like dead chat. Like, I know things have moved on, like Tinder, etc. But the chats, whatever channel it is, is the same. Yeah. What are you up to? How was your day? And I think when you're single, I guarantee that people can relate to this. I don't know who yours would have been there, but you, when you're single, you have that one person. You don't really fancy them, but they're your go-to. They're the person that you text throughout seeing other people. You never meet. Oh, yeah. You never that meet person that person. That gives you, like, that... They're more of, like, like, a friend. Yeah. Generally, they fancy you more than them. I had it with a guy that I work with. He messaged me, like, I really want to see you. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'd be like how are you how's your day oh, i really want to see you but he was like my safety net because as long as he messaged me i didn't feel like i was on my own <laughs> everyone has one of them i think they do as well but like with tinder though it's like it's like me and kim said that so we if were... you match so if i liked your so i thought oh yeah she's nice like your picture no 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 it's a swipe right or swipe left so, so what... you swipe right if you like them okay so i've swiped right then what does it tell you that i've said that no so then i'll be so you i'll be going through like my pictures yeah and then say your picture comes up and i swipe right it will say that we've matched because you swipe right and i swipe right okay but that's okay but like yeah so kim's never been on tinder so i said that what i wanted to do is get we want to get a burner phone and we want to download tinder and we want to have a little play around with it and see what kind of bullshit comes out of these people's mouths yeah so basically we've um restarted our tiktok so for anyone that wants some light entertainment we're going to green screen these chats because there's it's, it honestly i can't wait to do it to actually show you what these people say i've seen videos of like 
you know that, that there's people that like from different countries that want like visas yeah 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 i love it like and 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 men that are so rude like blunt like arrogant oh my god it's like you look really nice in that picture if you'd lost weight oh yeah thanks for the compliment or like, what are you up to thursday fancy a fuck lol yes yes it's just really wink like, emoji honest i feel from what i've been told that tinder is literally it, it it's it's for a shag right okay so when i was using it which was like what eight years ago now so it's obviously like hyped the game up because you can get like tinder premium and shit like that i don't even know we'll Is have that a like amazon prime i don't know <laughs> i'm not paying for it no well maybe but... they keep the fit people in there oh yeah probably they're like the serial daters anyway like celebs <laughs> oh no 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 there's a different dating app for celebs and you have to be verified no yeah. way anyway so how do you know this because i just know everything when i was on there anyone that i met up with so this is going back to knowing what i wanted anyone that i met up with through tinder there was no way it was going any further than like two dates because before sex you mean no i mean i'm not gonna see them after two dates i'm not in i don't want a relationship with someone i've met on tinder oh yeah yeah you said that to me before but I know people that have got, like, my friend's sister met her now husband, married two kids, happy. Yeah, so, like, you will find, like, someone Like, on when you're there. buying wedding stuff now, it's all, like, about Tinder, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like, but, happily after Tinder and all stuff like this. Yeah, but, like, obviously, you can meet, like, the love of your life on there, but the chances are probably, like, 2%. I think, pe- I think a, lo- a lot of people use it as a hobby it's to fill to a get- gap it's just you can go on i will sh- we will you'll be surprised when you go on there you literally can go on there swipe right and you can have someone around your house in like 10 minutes quicker than deliver yeah yeah whereas like <sighs> and also then you've got like the dangers of being single like i've heard like just yeah, from tinder on tinder now you have to verify your face yeah but still i suppose the thing is though is back in the day and we were single and you meet someone in a bar do you know what I mean? You don't know who they are. No. Realistically, no. you're going around their house <laughs> after like, what, two, three dates. We're just like so into crime that we just think that everyone's... I don't trust anything someone. anymore. No, but no. we, me, uh, everyone's probably heard about it in the Tinder story where he drugged her, like took her back. She thought he was really nice. She didn't feel well and stuff like that. And then he like she went to bed and he started like putting plastic all over the floor downstairs like chop yeah, her she up thought she had a she thought she had a burglar so she rang the police but he thought that he'd given her enough to knock her out but she like came to and rang the police and then the police turned up and he'd fucking had like all these knives laid out and tarpaulin oh everywhere. my god yeah crazy that was in like birmingham people are creeps but like talking of creeps <laughs> like I everyone's like going out of the box a little bit now with dating like prison girlfriends you go on writeaprisoner.com to talk to someone in America and then two weeks later you're engaged now I think see that's taken the the, the whole having someone to texture to fill a void <laughs> that's taken it to but, a new extreme like I think like okay 80% of the men in, that are incarcerated in America are probably just want you for your money so that they can get by but then there's the others that are actually like they're falling in love and then these girls over in the uk have got to wait like 13 years for these people to come out and they're like one girl that i follow her and her boyfriend got married online on a zoom whilst he was in prison she was over here and they've never met face to face and they're married and they've been talking for a year and like she's trying to fly out to america to go and finally meet him but he doesn't get out till like 2037 right i mean i would probably advise that you do not do this but and some I- people are having successful times doing this <laughs> look put your energy into what makes you happy but being realistic yeah if you're lonely most people need physical contact mm-hmm. i can't speak for everybody he like slaps he puts his dick sorry in... <laughs> he puts his it dick... was a slap <laughs> for me he puts his dick in coconut oil and then slaps it on a piece of paper and then sends it to her so she knows how big his dick is 
We're very creative. He also oh. sends drawings. I mean, I've seen videos where people make a casserole in a kettle in prison. The game's changed. <laughs> it's changed. <laughs> Literally, this guy's the Gordon Ramsay of Cell Block 5. <laughs> he's making desserts in the kettle. I mean, I don't know how he washes it out properly, but he's having a right old time. Also, what I w- wanted to talk about is dates. Mm. What's your ideal date? First date first day he's organizing it what would you like him to do this sounds like we're on love island doesn't it right okay i'm gonna be really oh god you take ages as no well. i'm gonna be over the Go. top because i've got high standards now yes you have so i'd now want... <laughs> i didn't back then burger king <laughs> i went to the fucking cinema for my first date with my husband anyway i would want if i was if i was this age when i met my husband i would want him to turn up with flowers okay mm-hmm. big bo- bouquet of flowers give them to me at the door I'll roses or any oh roses mate red yes okay i mean I'll, I'll take any color okay but um and then not the rainbow ones though oh no oh, give me the no i don't like those and then we would go for a drink then for food what food i want it like fine dining okay you need to take me to like um michelin star i mean that's a bit i'll go you're I'll, saying fine dining i mean i'll go to the coal shed <laughs> <laughs> pub grub no posh pub grub i will i will go anywhere where it's uh bit bougie where you can have six courses okay so you want you want roses six courses you want a little drink in between i want yeah and then after i'd want to go for like some cocktails okay and then I'd want to go home. I don't want no hanky panky on the first night. So that's but your I'd, ideal I'd, date. Yeah. And I'd want him to be dressed like nice, like shirt. Yeah, nice shoes, jeans is fine. Hair nice, smell nice. I don't. And yeah, I mean, my ideal first date. Did you see that girl on TikTok that got taken to Dubai? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, if I was talking ideal, then I'd be taken on holiday. But a realistic date. But a realistic date. date. That would be like my perfect date. And I'd want the chat to be good. I need to be pissing myself laughing the entire time. Okay, so he needs to be funny from when he picks you up. A hundred Till the end. I want like banter from the moment I Do you I want a kiss the at the end? Yeah. You'd probably instigate it, to be fair. You've had three porn star martinis by then. And But just a kiss. And I don't want any sex chat. I mean, you do get a little bit flirty when you've had a drink. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I don't No, That's not... That's not... I mean, I'll just be like biting my lip, kind of like... I asked about the date, not, not the sexual chemistry. Bit but... touchy-feely. I'd want fire sexual chemistry as well, but I don't want to fuck him. Yeah. You... Yeah. The ideal situation, girls, is when they touch your hand to move the bread off the table, your, your nanny is like... me. <laughs> Like and when they walk back to the toilet that's like you want the same feeling as when that waitress brings over your nando's free chicken mm. that same feeling like yes oh it's coming like they you know look it's good. good when they go to the toilet and you text your best mate like he is 100 percent. if you go to the toilet and you're facetiming your mate like no no also when you've had loads of wine and you're pissed and you don't know what you're doing and you think oh no i don't really like this i'll just have another glass to make it work I'd probably have bought the, oh, the date. Before. So have I, many a times. My ideal date would be, I would meet them there because I'm an independent woman. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want them to pick me up. Oh, yeah, but okay, right. This is my opinion on meeting someone there. Mm. Like, it's awkward. I love it. Because you've got to look around. No, no, them. I'd get them to meet me outside. But I'd want them to take me... Um, to ronnie scott's jazz club in london Ooh, yeah but you've got to get all the way to london but i'm just talking generally this right, would be okay. like this would be like my ideal i first didn't know date. that we were like venturing out otherwise we would have said something else okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was no tnc so it's fine <laughs> ronnie scott's london i'd meet him there he'd be outside nicely smartly dressed not too much aftershave okay Oh no, I like it when you're walking towards them and you, <laughs> you're like five tube. meters away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if you've got Dior Sauvage and I'm turning round, I'm turning round. Red flag. Red flag. Um, joggers and Dior Sauvage. Red flag. Um, I'd get there. We'd start off downstairs. They had those little cute lamps and I'd have dinner 
It's not a six call, sir. It's a three. I'd skip dessert and drink more wine. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. Um, but then I might have, instead of dessert, maybe like an espresso martini. Then, after a few drinks and eating the steak, medium rare, chips with truffle oil, I'd go upstairs for more drinks. And then obviously that's when they... So downstairs is like a jazz club when you're eating. And then upstairs is like a multicoloured dance floor, yeah? Like retro, it's tiny. There's like little booths. And then they play like disco. Would and you dance? A hundred percent. hundred percent. I'll be dancing, throwing some shapes. He'd think that I was really good at dancing in, in like a... <laughs> no, he would He would. Not. He would. Yeah. He would. And then... Um, He'd be like, look at Bambi <laughs> over there dancing. Also, I agree with Libby. Like, you have... You, you, for me, the most thing that's attractive is someone that can make you laugh and someone that doesn't take themselves too seriously. But what I've also learned is don't put it all out there like on the first and second date. No. The most toxic thing, self, not toxic, self-destructive thing you can do, ladies and men, is talk about your ex, talk about what things make you sad, talk about like your whole fucking life. You don't need to tell them what happened to you in year eight. No. You don't need to talk about if you've got children like the dad of your child. You don't need to talk about that. You need to just... It, and I feel I think that... If something's organic, like you can feel the vibe. I think if you if have to force it on yeah, I think the first date, it's when not. When they're talking and you're thinking about what you're gonna say next, mm. then no. You know, like, have you ever had a date where it's almost like the restaurant's closing and you're still like talking? Yeah. And you don't all like not. That's a bit dramatic if you've been unless you've been there for like five they hours. They don't like turn the lights off or anything, but yes. Or like when you don't want to go. Mm-hmm. You don't because really you're just them. having so much fun like it's you're having such a nice time and you've got so much to say i also find it re- because i ov- obviously talk shit for england i feel that i on dates before like i have to carry the conversation That's such like an whereas i've gone for like really good looking men that have got as much chat as a gp receptionist dead i would say like most men that are really attractive and i think we've said this before there's nothing on the end there's no substance to it and then that's because we're all going for the aesthetic everyone's yeah. guilty of it men are the same if someone's really good looking like may in that, and that goes back to like maybe put some work we all we all try and look our best on the outside don't we but have you actually got anything to say hun probably not like uh, uh, do you know what? really like, unattractive if to I me i went on a date with a man and he was just like being awkward and not talking like flooding. it's heartbreaking though it is heartbreaking if you're sitting opposite someone who you physically are so attracted to and then you're like hyped up for it and then they've got nothing to say yeah but i think that automatically makes someone unattractive yeah so that it goes isn't it yeah in that moment you're like oh no no this isn't gonna work for me because for sexual chemistry, it's not just on what someone looks like, is it? That's only, no. only going to carry you so far. Like, I think, and especially, not to sound patronising, but as you get older, look, and I, this is how I know I'm getting old, looks do fade. So, oh, you God, got, if you're yeah. thinking long-term relationship down the line, what are you actually left with? You might have tattoos and then a fade, but let's forward into like 50s, 60s. Yeah, what, what are you going to be left with? A miserable, balding fart that has nothing to say. <laughs> Where's his Audi now? He's got a Volvo now. <laughs> it's got a Volvo. You need someone that's going to keep like the relationship buzzing. Yeah, like if you've not got the same, like it, not even interest, but like humour is massive. Um, Listening. Like if, I'm on a day and... They need to ask questions about you. Yeah, and like actually respond. Yeah. I mean... What's a good question on a date? Where do you see yourself in five years? No fucking way. Yeah, I'll just do that for Bance. I don't know. The most prominent question I remember on mine and Dan's first date was he asked me what my favourite food was and then I asked him what his favourite food was and then he started telling me... Is Dan me? me? I think so. I think he actually is. You two is. are literally yeah. the same. That's why me and you are soulmates. Because that's why I constantly say to people, like, what are you having for dinner? What's your favourite food? All revolves around what people are eating. That is a good question, though. What but, did you say yours was? Lasagna? No, it's bag bowl. It's bag bowl. It's changed since then. What's it now? Um. <laughs> Fucking cereal. Cereal. 
But um, yeah, and then he's just started telling me about how this one time he ate this burger and it was really hot, and then he had got diarrhea and now his stomach really hurts. But that was oh, funny the for me. Burger yeah. in the world, but sorry. that was funny to me. Like I want someone who's not going to take themselves yeah. seriously. And you go, want someone who talks about shit in themselves. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like and then like I was like yeah he's funny and then I went to the toilet and I was texting my mates like he's so fucking fit I really really fancy him that's what you need yeah like I mean some people you need like to serious, come man. out you need to leave that day whatever it is yeah and when you put your head in that pillow at night you you're smiling yeah even if they were like whatever I don't know whatever the banter's like or messaging you or you mess them good night you're literally buzzing to see him. That's that there that, like, is happiness. That in your belly where you feel sick. Yeah. You're waiting to, like, and then like when you again. wake up and they're like morning. Oh yeah. Like I don't know what to call it. That sort of fear. It's like a buzzy feeling, isn't it? It's butterflies. Like butterflies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I could bottle it, I'd be a rich woman. Because I think that's what we all. When we're single, that's the, that's the bit you want. Or when you're in a relationship and the relationship might be going down the wrong path or going a bit dead that's what you crave a hundred percent like when but it doesn't mean that just because you're with this is what i think people do people get in relationships it gets harder and then that's when people either cheat on you or end the relationship because they want that thrill again yeah it's the chase but you're it? not like you can't keep doing that forever because you're never i believe that when you're with the right person obviously things go a bit wrong can go a bit wrong but there's no re- there's no expiry date, is there? Because no. surely the connection would be deeper. You share different things, so you might not get butterflies every. It's different, but I think the issue is is that like in society today, like we're programmed into thinking that you have like one bump in the road and then it's like, oh, I've got a abort mission. And yeah. then you go and meet someone else and you get that feeling again. But it, you're always going to have that feeling because it's excitement. Mm-hmm. And you- I think true love is when you're with someone, you've been with them for a long period of time and they walk into a room and they're the first person that you you, 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 you will look at. Yeah. yeah, They're the person that you look at in a room. And when, say you're at a party or a wedding reception me and Libby are the people at, if you invited us to your wedding we're more than happy to go just say, please invite us we but we're the people that even if we went together we'd go the other way of each other and we'd end up being in the room talking to other people but that I mean like say Dan came into the room and you would be the first person that he saw and yeah, say yeah, yeah. you know like when you're with someone and they're talking to other people at a party oh. and you stare at them and, yeah yeah, and you're like in awe of them so yeah. that's what i feel like it's not like a butterfly feeling but then like in a social situation maybe or like if they're just doing something like if you've got kids or i don't know they're talking uh, to someone honestly, it gives me like f- fanny flutters when i see like dan making the kids laugh i'm like oh yeah <laughs> yeah so so that's what i mean so that's obviously a progression of butterflies that feeling yeah like as you progress into a relationship a deeper and you're married connection. and you've got kids you fancy them for different reasons don't you yeah then i mean beginning. if you've not got kids obviously your relationship will deepen that's what i'm trying to get at so something stupid i don't know they're at a wedding like on, let's say your partner was like making a speech at a wedding and then that feeling when you're looking at them like oh my god they're with me yeah. it's like being in awe of somebody yeah Someone that, well, I'm still friends with her, but her husband watches her get ready in the morning every day. That would give me the creeps, though. No, but it's not like he's like, what contour are you using? (laughs) But he, I've spoken to Libby about this before. Like, it, I know there's so many people like, oh, I love like that. Like, it's bollocks. Like, it doesn't, that person doesn't exist. I've seen it. I've seen it. It does exist. He, when she was pregnant and we went out for dinner, when she talks, we were talking about, I don't know, something stupid like parking in the car park or what we're going to order. He looks, he hangs off her every word because she was talking to like, the group, yeah? She was talking to the table and he was literally like, oh, at her. <laughs> and I remember like, it, it is real, I've seen it. And I like, my mum and dad, like, they, they obviously argue and have disagreements, but they've been married like forever and they are like both like that. So I do think it exists. But at the same time, like, 
the pressure of being in a relationship and trying to get to that like point I honestly think that you can be happy on your own oh yeah cool it's you know I think we're, we're like the way we're going on now like oh yeah they get they're giving you butterflies I think you can get that sense of love from people that you're friends with I think that you can also have like love so much peace it's not more like lo- loving yourself as in like oh look at me look at me but like being at peace of yourself and actually taking time that from stuff that you might have gone through that just take your time with it mm. because if you don't do that you'll literally jump in from that's why it ain't working hun no yeah even if they've cheated on you or i don't know had an affair left you you've i don't know you have to move back in with your mums and you're thinking i just want to be with someone else i just want why why is i'm not meeting the right person it's because you're not meant to meet with someone right now which sounds really hippie-ish yeah but that's what we are like yeah like, like me and libby literally said the other day like why do certain things keep happening to us why why does this always happen to me or why am i going through this again i honestly believe it's because i keep making the same mistake because i've not learned from it so yeah. until I actually, someone up there is going to me, I'm going to keep testing you, yeah, until you get it right. Now, you seem to have got it wrong a lot, so we're going to give it another go again. <laughs> and get it right. It's basically time. like my provisional driving test. <laughs> I think I must have done that about 20 times. <laughs> the same fucking questions. Um, so, being oh. a, and being single at Christmas, like don't just get a boyfriend for oh, life you ain't not just get, for christmas yeah but people feel your like that though a present no you can buy yourself a present yeah exactly and also like it's the thing now of like taking yourself on a date love that yeah love that go and buy yourself something take yourself out for lunch go and have a coffee like it's all good and well being like oh it's just so nice like watching bridget jones with my that, that's not really real life they'll do that for the first couple of months and they'll have the computer on they're not going to do that are yeah, they? but like what I was saying earlier, I think when you're, rather than like when you're in a relationship, when you're dating, I think a lot of it is like you, ch- everyone chases the thrill of like being liked yeah. and being fancied. And I think that's what, like when you're, I don't think I've actually ever met anyone that isn't, that is single and is not actively speaking to anyone. No. Because I think as humans, we like chase the thrill of like being liked. And wanted. And wanted. Yeah. It's an ego thing. Yeah. And like also like because of that feeling and because we are all like very like self-obsessed creatures like we are, that is why the dating world online is so easily disposable because as much as people are gonna come at me and disagree we'll mean they be both we are not built to be on our own no as creatures yeah that's not what we've evolved from you're, you're supposed to, to be have in a mate a partnership yeah. whatever the, what you know with whoever yeah you are meant to be with somebody yeah. that's emotionally physically we all have certain needs yes a lot of the needs you can fulfill yourself but there's certain things that you're you're not you weren't put on this planet to specifically like be on your own for like everything and that's why you feel like the way you do because you could be self-love happiness happy living on your own whatever great people around you you are going to get days or moments where you crave what libby's just spoken about that's that's what you're going to crave and that's normal like and i feel that if you're in a like never again i don't want to be with anyone ever again there's a reason behind that that's deeper Mm -hmm. and that's what we're trying to say like see we're very like spiritual in terms of like we believe in like soulmates and people that you've been with in like a past life that you constantly meet with again and i think we should do an episode on like twin flames soulmates and all yeah. that stuff some people don't believe in it but i think it's because we've all been made out that you meet someone you like them you get married and they're your soulmate yeah no I that's don't not think what that's we true. think no um and again are we made and that's why i think relationships break down because we're not it's not taught to you in school is it you're going to you're going to meet someone yeah and it's not going to be like a tick the box things aren't going to be like meet buy a house buy a dog have a kid 
get ma- or get married, then have a kid, then retire in Spain. That's not. <laughs> but that is like what that's we what all TV think is going to be like, isn't like, it? Like, do you really think that you're not going to sit next to your partner and they're eating loudly and be like, ugh? See, but talking of that, I think like, our, our, we need to do an episode on like it. A hundred percent. We got so much, um, so many messages uh, about X as well. So funny. And it's not just about people that you're in a relationship with. Like, there is just things like the ick. Like, things that literally, I'm like, oh, God, I hate that. Even, like, pe- just, like, people that you come across. Yes, so annoying. Like, people maybe that you work with. At work, oh, people yeah. you work oh, with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your neighbour. I fucking love it. But, like, of because, obviously, like, on the track of, like, dating, we've spoke about our dream date. But there is, like when you think to yourself like oh my god this is like that is like the worst day i could ever think of and then like you just get like full-blown ick i've been on a day oh, mine's go ape. Me. oh go ape's fun no i don't yeah but i don't like stuff like that have you never done it no i don't want to i mean i shit myself because i'm scared of heights but i like going down on because you're zip obviously wire. gonna meet the guy yeah the zip wire it's fine it's the climbing it's the f- h- harness up me noon yeah <laughs> It's, it's the outfit, it's sweaty, and then they want to go and get a burger. I don't really like burgers afterwards. No, no, no. <laughs> Not me at all. You can't have a little drink. Mine would be go-karting. Oh, I'd oh, love that. Would you? Yeah. I wouldn't want to wear a helmet. I would. I'd feel like a stig. I'd love that. <laughs> I'm not very good at it, though, so I'd be like, No, i tell you what my worst date would be. <laughs> Swimming. <laughs> if someone's like, meet me at the pool. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know. How cringe, and then you've got to walk you're, through you that water, dream. that foot water <laughs> bit. Oh, I wouldn't. Can you imagine if they were like so fit, and then like their feet made you have the ick? That's we it. That. Game over. Like, Ugh. <laughs> oh no, that would be like no, <laughs> like that program, Naked Attraction. Yeah. Imagine if that was actually a fit. That I it can't even thing. watch it. How is that a thing? It gives it honestly. If I was, and then the, the presenters like looking at his willy and like. She, you, she makes comments yes, on them. It's so weird. <laughs> I can't believe you said swimming. Like, that's so funny. <laughs> that's my worst. That is literally up there. I'd do a bomb into the pool. Like, hey. You what, would hate. What's he going to do? You Swim, wouldn't, you wouldn't go. Swimming in the middle of the no, pool. No, that thing where they like wait. They like just like piss in the pool, don't they? <laughs> Sitting there. They, they, they've got underneath their, the And tunnel. I'm not talking like a spa pool. I'm talking like the, the local <laughs> pool. The council pool. <laughs> And then afterwards, they'd be like, do you want a cone of chips or some oh, some, no! some vending machine <laughs> crisps? <laughs> and it's really hot. So, like, your hair goes like Monica from Friends. Cause, you know, those dryers that are, like, sellotaped to the wall. No, We're not going to steal them. No, for me, the ick of the swimming pool is when you get out the pool and you have to walk through that water that yes, everyone... It's got verrucas in it. <laughs> And your, your swimming costume's and up your ass. A shower. <laughs> it's so gross. And then you get mums that are in the in the middle of the halls, naked, naked <laughs> putting talc. talc. And it's all, <laughs> all getting stuck to the fucking slab. <laughs> so yeah, that would oh, be my God, worst you day. Can <laughs> change your roots next week. <laughs> and there's skiddy pants would fall on the floor. <laughs> I'd steal them from under the door. <laughs> Or like, you know, there's always like random little pools of water and your clothes like fall into <laughs> They're what brown? <laughs> Wherever Libby goes, there's shit on the floor. It's not clean like probably. King Alfred, it's <laughs> <disgusting>. <laughs> yeah. And like hair in the <laughs> in the drain. No. And and then, and then someone, all and then also like shit in the pool. <laughs> You'd have no makeup on as well. <laughs> You'd have no eyebrows. Oh, yeah. I would, oh, honestly. It's the vending machine afterwards for me. Oh, do you know what I hate? <laughs> when men put the locker key around their ankle. <laughs> How do you put it? <laughs> oh, I don't know. one. She's getting my mates to do it. <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah, that, see, that would be a terrible day, wouldn't it? Yeah also like a picnic where they've not got a hamper like if they took you to tesco just put it in a carrier bag 
Well, what man has a picnic hamper? Well, that's what I mean. If it was, if it was, if that's what they were going to do, I'd want a hamper. Yeah, with plates and a little bottle of like wine Fizz. in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's that's what I'd want. Um, that swimming thing really made me laugh. Nothing tops swimming for me. I think a theme park would be a very tiring date, like first date, but it would be All a good date. Scream though, and the queue. And what if he gets on? <laughs> what if he farted in the queue? <laughs> What if he screams like a girl? Yeah, what if his shoe ride? fell off? How embarrassing. Oh or what We're if he was too hit. short for the ride? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's a nervous... Or if you got in, like, the car, like, the car and they were too plump. And they couldn't <laughs> get the bar down. <laughs> Imagine oh, turning God. up on a first day and they were smaller than they stated on their Tinder yeah. profile. Or the other way around. Like, if you're a guy... And she said that she's like average height and she's like my height. Yeah, like six foot. Yeah. Oh God, we're going to have to do a whole thing. That's like, so funny. What what you lot feel is gross because we got so many messages come through. And Obviously everyone, some people it's... love like adrenaline dates. Some people like to be busy to avoid the conversation. Will, yeah, Clearly me and Libby want to have three roses <laughs> and interrogate you like we're on SAS Who Dares Wins. Oh yeah, that'd when be a they good put date, the bag it? With that, oh, your... that guy, he's so... <laughs> Fit. he's not on it anymore is he what why i think he was racist he's oh. right yeah not he's not a nice guy oh okay he's anymore. Not fit. um also what would be really good is a murder mystery <gasps> evening as a first date yes i would love that I'm, i need to do that for like my 100th date with dan that would be so fun wouldn't it fucking yes because you'd both be like I think you'd, it'd be like a school trip. Oh, yeah, but then, like, me and Dan do, like, the escape room on our little, like, VR headset and we argue. And I think you'd end up getting in an argument because they would, like, be like, it's him in the bathroom. And you'd be like, no, it's her in the kitchen. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'd be like, for fuck's sake, you're so shit at this. I'd be like, where's your it's fucking it? costume? It's... <laughs> What have you come as? I'm like, we, this is never going to work. I'd be in a Victorian wig, like a full, you know, the, you know, the really tall hair, like a jelly. And I'd have like a mole on my face and I'd be like, what have you come as, peasant? And he'd be like a kitchen maid. No, you would look fit as like that French woman with the feather in her hair with your new haircut. Oh, like a da 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 Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. But, but yeah, we've gone massively off that. Yeah, we've gone off track. But on the presence of dating we will do a whole episode on what is our worst date yeah we must have had some really bad no but have you actually yeah yeah we've got example yeah libby's got a ton of very shit dates um obviously i spoke about that guitar guy that wasn't really a date it was his house but that's up there that is that was so funny yeah i've got like i've got loads as well so we'll share with you our shittest dates um and i wonder we... if me and you are on any shit date lists oh a hundred percent no i think i'm a really good like really good data i think i'm a very good data but i ghost which you'll hear about i always fall week. at the hurdle when i meet the parents always they always hate me the mums always apart from one lorraine absolute ledge if i could move her to now even now <laughs> I'd love her to be my mother-in-law. Well, I really you, got you on with her. You could adopt her as your mother-in-law. Is that a thing? Yeah. No, she's got a daughter-in-law now, though. Be a bit oh, weird. That is Don't a bit weird. I think she'd be a bit annoyed. Oh yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Why is his ex like? <laughs> That's so weird. From like fifteen years ago. <laughs> Hiya. And the dad was really nice as well. But I think for me, I always fall. I'm really good at dating until the parents are involved. Like this one guy I was seeing told his mum that I didn't smoke, but he smoked. So they were all ha- Why do so they him, do and, him and his dad went outside, right? And I was just there with his mum, who was lovely. But, but I was also at the point that I was having a glass of wine, some crisps. And then she was like, disgusting, isn't it, that they smoke? And I was like, ha- I was fuming. Oh, my God. Fu- Why would you do that? That's so awkward. Oh, God. But anyway, we're at an hour, guys. So we'll go into that next week. We'll show you your icks. We'll talk about our icks and we'll have a good time. And keep out, keep an eye out for our... Um, TikTok. Our TikTok. Our Instagram. Yes. Um, and share it to your friends. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. And um, we will be disclosing at some point on our TikTok and Instagram um, a plan that we have to save you from your... 
dickhead boyfriends. It's called the hun trap. It's called the honey to trap. To be continued. Have a lovely <laughs> weekend. Take care. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye.